Hello, everybody. Great news coming out of Canada today. Doug Ford's government in Ontario just announced that they want to realize three new power plants. And chances are that these will become nuclear power plants. It's not entirely certain at this point, but all signs point to these becoming nuclear sites. So what are we going to do in this video? Uh, we read through the news article announcing the news. We check the sites on Google Maps and we take a brief overlook on other energy infrastructure in Canada. So first, let's take a look at the news. The Ford government is looking to build three new power plants to meet electricity demand. Here's where they will be located. Uh, most interesting bits, I'm not going to read the entire thing. With demand continuing to grow, it is clear we must build for the future and plan ahead. Energy Mr. Stephen Lecce said in a statement calling more nuclear power the only way we can reduce carbon emissions while increasing the electricity supply, Lecce hinted at the need for new power plants last month. When the province's independent electricity system operator issued a new forecast showing the need for power will soar 75% by 2050. So if Ontario actually, you know, we're talking about nearly doubling uh, the power demand in Ontario uh, in 25 years, roughly. So Ontario, we're in the, here, here's Canada. There's roughly 40 million people living in Canada, and there's about 15 million people living in Ontario, making it the most populous province in the land. And most of these people live down here in the greater Toronto metropolitan area. And the Toronto metropolitan area is really big. I, I actually drove through it twice. Uh, it starts down here at Hamil Hamilton. Uh, Kitchener could also still be considered part of the greater metropolitan area. And it then goes all the way up east, all the way to Oshawa over here, uh, Bowmanville, you know, that, that, that's maybe calling it the, the most extreme point of Ontario. Now, if we look at where they get their electricity from, uh, this is a nice, uh, website that you can, where you can, where you can see all these statistics, live.gridwatch.ca. And this is basically, uh, from Ontario. So where you, what you see is that they have 10 gigawatts of nuclear power and that's 63.5 percent of the grid electricity comes from nuclear 25.3 percent of the electricity comes from hydro then there's a little bit of gas 7.8 percent and wind 3.3 percent so in ontario they haven't lost their marbles they actually understood that if you build a lot of nuclear you can get rid of coal and you can also basically mitigate your gas usage they also have a lot of hydro but as you can see nuclear basically carries the load in ontario so let's take a look at the the, the largest sites in ontario where uh, currently nuclear power plants exist so first we are going over here this is bruce right in bruce they have eight can do reactors pressurized heavy water reactors reactors that can run on natural uranium you don't have to enrich any uranium uh, to power these reactors and they are planning to build another 4.8 gigawatts of nuclear power at this site so this is really this is going to be the largest nuclear power plant in the world if they continue the way they are going currently and excuse excuse the sound that the cat is making i'm sorry but you know all right, the cat is saddled. So uh, the next site that we are going to check, and, and this is a uh, this is a very uh, beautiful power plant. It's Pickering again, eight can do reactors at the site. The beautiful thing about Pickering is that it was actually uh, basically they said we're not going to refurbish it. It needs a refurbishment in order to stay operational beyond its. Uh, it, 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 it's 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 plant lifetime. Uh, they can actually refurbish it, but because they had to uh, cut into the containment, I believe it, it, it would become prohibitively expensive. Now, with the tireless advocacy of Chris Kiefer, um, OPG and Ontario finally decided that they do want to refurbish Pickering, uh, which 
is a great win for Ontario. It is a great win for the world because this nuclear power plant simply has a lot more life left in it after it has gotten some good TLC. Now over here you can see there's quite some industry in this in this area, which is logical. I mean, you're you're looking at the largest population center in Canada, so it's logical that there's also a lot of industry there. Now over here we have Darlington, again, uh, pressurized heavy water reactors, can do reactors, and over here this is the site where they want to build their BWRX three hundred. Uh, boiling water reactors now there's a lot of debate whether you should build boiling water reactors at this site especially small ones because once you've built four uh, boiling water reactors over here 300 megawatt ones it, you only have added 1.2 gigawatts whereas if you would copy uh, the Darlington uh, can do reactors and you would, would basically build a copy right next to it you would essentially double uh, Darlington's power output whereas right now you would only increase it by a third um, so that's not optimal then over here this is basically the site where they are planning to build a new power plant it's the Ontario Generation Wesleyville uh, site so probably what has been here uh, used to be a coal-fired power plant uh, not entirely certain it could also have been a gas plant but in any case you can see I believe that this is still uh, the power conversion equipment that's there uh, probably the generation building where the generator is housed and, and the, the the boilers that used to be here whether that were, were coal boilers or gas boilers those have been demolished but this is an ideal place uh, to build a new nuclear power plant if you really want to because it's right at the shore of Lake Ontario so you have all the cooling water that you need but you're also quite close to all the power distribution infrastructure that runs along the shore and that is connected to Darlington and is connected to uh, Pickering and finally uh, connects uh, the greater Toronto area to this entire network now down here this is an interesting site nanty coke uh, this used to be uh i don't know what kind of uh what kind of power plant it used to be it's probably going to be again a coal fire power plant that used to be here the switch yard is still intact uh they built a lot of uh, solar panels well it's not a lot but they built some solar panels at this site and as you can see the power plant itself has been demolished so this again is an excellent site for a new nuclear power plant it's also interesting so right here over here yeah you have nanti coke this is also interesting yeah, over here you can see this reddish ore so so the question is whether they whether this is just a coke's factory or whether they also uh, produce some steel here uh, it's, it's hard to tell i have to i have to find that out one day because that that might be relevant for another video and the final place where they want to uh, build a new power plant is down here it's in Lambton and what you can see over here again a decommissioned power plant uh, probably gas or coal um, has been destroyed completely or deconstructed completely and what you see over here is still the intact switch yard now that's very interesting and very smart by the way because you don't see this very often usually when um a, a a power plant is decommissioned what they do is they 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 basically try to make it as greenfield as possible again so take out all the all the all the equipment uh, get rid of all the the concrete all the asphalt and basically then just let nature run its course right have nature run its course but in Canada, they don't do that, at least not at all the sites, because uh, the first site that you saw, there was no switchyard left. Uh, but over here, there's a switchyard left uh, at the Nanty Coke site. There's also a switchyard left. Now, the interesting bit is if you look at how wide this area is, right? I mean, we're talking about 600 meters. You know, you, you could you could probably, if, if you would uh, take it a little bit wider like this, right? You go from four it's almost a kilometer wide now if we go for instance to pickering we can see that you can do a lot at you can do a lot on one kilometer right so we go down here to pickering and we take our ruler and we see 
that the Pickering nuclear power plant itself, without all the extra buildings and all the extra equipment that is needed to put all that electricity on the grid, is, is only 800 meters wide, maybe 900 meters. So in theory, in theory, you should be able to build a Pickering clone at this site, right over here at Lambton. You should be able to build a Pickering clone there. Now, interestingly enough, if you look at this Nanticoke site over here, uh, that's wide enough as well. Uh, just this part alone over here. Uh, let's take the ruler again. Uh, let's take, there you go. It's 900 meters. So in theory, in theory, you could put another Pickering over here and add a lot of power to your grid. So what is currently being considered over here at this side over here, right? The Bruce Power uh, site. Currently, they are looking at, again, boiling water reactor X300 by GE Itachi, but they're also looking at EP1000s, and they're looking at the new Monarch uh, Kandu reactor. Now, personally, I would say build the Monarch reactor wherever you can build it in, in, in all the next construction projects that there will be the next nuclear construction projects in, in Canada. The reason for this is obvious. It is a domestic product. They have a workforce that knows how to operate these things. They have a workforce that knows how to refurbish these things. And once you have those two, uh, you're pretty close to having a workforce that knows how to build these things. So it really... You know, they're, they're, personally, I have a big problem with the state of the nuclear industry right now, because I have been talking about nuclear for the past 15 years now. And and we, we really need a breakthrough uh, in, in especially in becoming better at building these things, making sure that we can build them faster and cheaper every time we build the next one. So a fleet approach is probably best. And, and it would be best if you had a design that, that had a pretty cookie cutter approach to civil works and all the rest. Something that you can replicate over and over and over again, right? That's, that's the most important bit about the new nuclear era. If we want to have this new nuclear era, if we want to start building a lot of nuclear power plants, everything has to be as cookie cutter as possible. We have to basically... Uh, this this was the thing that initially made me so hyped up about small modular reactors, right? I thought, well, if, if we could produce all this equipment at in factories and simply transport the stuff over to the site and then install it there, uh, that would be the game changer. But it turns out, you know, whatever, whenever you build a nuclear power plant, you will have civil works. You will have to construct a concrete building that has a containment that is meant to both keep radiation inside and keep stuff that you don't want to have breach your containment on the outside. And, and, and to make these buildings, you have to move a lot of dirt. You have to lay a con concrete foundation. It, it's simply unavoidable. So I'm no longer uh, hyped up about SMRs. I do still think that some SMRs show some promise and, and are uh, ideal uh, options to augment our nuclear deployment scope, right? But for now, what I say whenever somebody, some, someone asks me what, what, what are we supposed to build, I'm going to say build whatever you have available at this time what you know you can build and especially build something for which you have a clear outlook that when you do 10 of them, the 10th one will have been constructed significantly faster than the first one will be much cheaper than the first one. That's the, those are the only conditions that I would say uh, are really relevant here. Obviously, you also want to have something that is dependable, but in any case, I think that Canada should go with the Monarch reactor for these three new sites, also for Bruce. And with that, you've made it to the end of this video. If you're still here, thank you very much. Uh, I hope that this was informative for you. Now, if you've learned something today, please 
leave a like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps me out. The channel has been growing tremendously lately. Now, if you want to support the channel, please go to Patreon and become a paying Patreon member, or you can become a member by clicking the join button down below. Now, if you want to add something to the discussion, please leave a comment down below. And with that, I want to thank you all for watching. May the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.